Gemma and Milo, part five. Gemma and Milo sat around a campfire on the shore at dusk. They had found nothing but dunes, which are small hills of sand and desert. And Gemma decided it was best for them to stay near the Mystic Creed for the night. The biggest reason was that there was no way to tell where the tiny ship had led them. Nearest Gemma could figure, the Forbidden Island had been somewhere on the edge of the Azul Sea, and its waters were, by far, the most mysterious of the eight seas. Almost all her treasure hunting was done in the Cascade Sea and the Sparkling Sea. Occasionally, she ventured out to the Mosaic Sea to Island Hop, but that was more for Milo than for Riches. Gemma always found a reason to stop by Lima Island while they were there. To Milo's utter delight, the Azul Sea, though, had a reputation for legend and danger. There were even rumblings of fantastical creatures, but, Gemma noted, never any evidence or first-hand accounts. Once they found whatever it was they were looking for, Gemma vowed to sail them back straight home to Harbour Town. But first, they would need to decipher another riddle. This time, it had come from a bottle. Gemma held the empty bottle in her hand and read the clue on the piece of paper aloud once again. As the day rises, the cotton tails run, follow their tracks by the light of the sun. The fire crackled as Gemma and Milo pondered the words. Cotton tails? They must mean rabbits, right? Milo curled his tail into a tight ball and hopped around on all fours. Quit it, Milo. This is serious business, Gemma said with a laugh and a smile. Milo grabbed a bundle of licorice and snapped off a piece that he felt he'd earned for his performance. Gemma had laid out some food around the campfire that she got from the yellow knapsack that she always brought on expeditions. There was sourdough bread, jerky, apples, oranges, and a bundle of licorice, which was getting smaller by the hour. Whatever we're supposed to do next, it must wait for morning. By the light of the sun, the riddle says. Gemma pulled out a desk of purple giants and goblin cards. They were a gift from her uncle. Soon after, her parents sent her to stay with him. They're good for passing the time on the sea, he would say. Remember... The giants might be stronger, but goblins have the numbers and the smarts. Her uncle had taught her all the best combinations and tricks. 
his shipmates taught her all the best ways to cheat. Cheating was as big of a part of the game as anything else. Even more so when Milo was playing. They played game after game until the stars were glowing as brightly as the lightning bugs nearby. I play a stone giant, said Gemma triumphantly. Milo looked at his deck with his tongue slightly sticking out of his mouth. A sign of his highest level of concentration. He gave a sly, wheezing chuckle and laid down four goblins. Three that had weapons and one that was holding a lure, a musical instrument. He raised his hands and shook them together triumphantly. Wait a second, let me see your tail, she demanded. Milo spun around but conveniently kept his tail hidden from view. But Gemma stood up and spotted the four clandestine cards he was gripping behind his back. I knew it, he said. You're a goblin thief. Milo looked back up at her with the widest, most innocent yellow eyes he could muster. Until a smile swept over Gemma's face involuntarily. Soon they were laughing. I don't know why I bother playing with you, she realised. Milo stood up proudly and let out a series of serious and determined squeaks. I know, I know, you come from a long line of cheaters and it was your great grand Lima's last witch that you carry on the tradition, Gemma translated. It was, in fact, exactly what Milo was saying. Gemma laid back onto a piece of driftwood and looked up at the moon, full in the sky. She tapped her side and Milo nodded to accept, snuggling in next to her. What do you think it is, Milo? What's the greatest treasure in the world? Milo thought for a moment, then hopped up with a smile. He pointed to his tail with both hands and squeaked. Gemma smirked and then laid back down dismissively. It is not a gold tail ringland. Not everyone has a tail, you know. Milo shrugged and laid back down. Gemma didn't say it, but there was more than one occasion where she had truly, desperately wished she had a tail. It was hard to have a best friend with Milo's tail talent. It was a constant reminder that her rare end was inferior in all but one way. Sitting in chairs. Milo had a difficult time finding a place for his tail. If a genie gave her the chance to grow one, she would have taken it. Although, It would have meant finding a genie with a very specific set of powers and then it would mean a lot of explaining, being a human with a lemur-sized tail for the rest of her life. These were the thoughts that carried Gemma 
off to sleep that night. A tale obsessed genie and a lifetime of arguments with pants makers. It wasn't the sun or Milo snoring that woke Gemma up, but the low trampling rumble of a stampede. The vibrations rocked her awake and caused her eyes to open through heavy blinks. A cloud of sand was approaching their camp. Wake up, Milo! It's... It's a... Uh, I don't know where it is! Gemma yelled. Milo sat up sh- right and rubbed his eyes. A piece of liquor still hung from his lips as he looked around. He was just in time to see a blur of ears and feet and tails storming into the centre of their campsite. They were moving in a speedy, rigid formation. A hard and sharp turn towards the desert led them straight over the sand dunes out of sight. There was no mistaking it. These were cottontail rabbits, just as Gemma had expected. But she had not expected what they found in the rabbit's wake. Milo stuffed the dangling licorice into his mouth as they stared at the bare ground with not a speck of food left. Gemma and Milo, part six. After them, yelled Gemma. The pack of cottontail rabbits had cleared the beach and hurried into the desert. Milo grabbed the sack off the sandy shore and handed it to Gemma. They followed after the rabbits, kicking up swirls of sand like a tornado in a field of flowers. Running with all the speed they could muster, Gemma and Milo kept up for the better part of an hour. Under the blistering sun, it was getting harder and harder to keep up their pace. The rabbits, it seemed, were a bit more adapted than them at desert sprints. Whether they wanted to admit it or not. As the sun hit the middle of the sky, the chase brought them all to a small desert oasis with palm trees, green plants, and a small fresh water pond. Am I seeing things, Milo? asked Gemma, out of breath and so hot that her hair seemed to be sweating. Milo's wide eyes and drooling grin told her that she wasn't. No time to stop, she panted. We need to catch those rabbits. Milo let out a disappointed squeak but pressed on. The rabbits tore through the oasis without a second thought and continued into large dunes. When Gemma and Milo took the same path and came to the top of a dune, the rabbits were gone. All they saw were row upon row of sand dunes. They could have gone anywhere, said Gemma. Those dunes make it impossible to see. Gemma raised his finger to make a point and then flopped back onto the sand. Milo, are you okay? she asked. Milo didn't answer. Do you want me to go to the oasis? she asked. Milo didn't move. Do you want me to carry you to the oasis? she asked. 
Milo lifted his head and nodded with a smile. Jemma picked him up and they made their way back down the dune, straight towards the oasis pond. The shade from the palm trees gave them immediate relief from the sun overhead as they lay down by the pond next to each other. There were a dozen bushes and patches of uneven grass around the rim of the water. It felt cool and soft beneath their heads. It was the first moment of rest they'd had since waking up. And it felt better than good and gooder than great to not be running. How are we going to catch those rabbits? Gemma asked. Instead of answering, Milo rolled over into the pond and slurped up as much as water as he could. Yeah, I guess we can figure it out tomorrow, he said. But Milo didn't hear her because he was busy doing the backstroke. That night, under a sky filled with stars, they sat around a new fire and got ready for sleep. The water had rejuvenated them, but their food supply was dwindling. After the rambunctious rabbits had robbed them, this night's feast was smaller than the last, but they were happy to have it. As Milo chewed on a licorice cheese stick, Gemma laid her head on a particularly comfortable patch of onion grass. So, what do you really think the greatest treasure in the world will be? She asked him. Milo hopped up and twirled his fingers around his tail from top to bottom with a series of squeak. It is not a diamond tail spiral, Milo. Not everything has to do with your tail, she replied. Milo chuckled to himself and lay down next to her. They stared up at the night sky and got lost in the sparkling patterns above them. They're beautiful. Aren't they? she said. Milo nodded happily. They remind me of the night before my parents left. My mum took me to a waterfall and... Gemma was interrupted by Milo snoring. She glanced over and saw him, fast asleep. Good night, Milo, she finished. The next morning, they were woken again by the herd of cottontails. Exhausted from a day of pursuit, Gemma and Milo had slept all the way through to midday. The rabbits headed straight through the oasis, as they had before. By the time Gemma opened her eyes and realised it, it was too late. Gemma had left their food out again, and the rabbits were devouring it as they passed. No! Shoo! Get out, take here, she yelled, sitting up and reaching towards them. They were gone before she got to her feet. Gemma grabbed her bag and ran to the top of the dune. Just like before, the rabbits were gone, more gone even. It had taken Gemma longer to climb the dune in her sleepy state. Milo! had impressively not even woken up. They're gone again, she said, as Milo rubbed his eyes open, and they took the food we left out. Milo scrambled to the backpack and crawled inside to look through. He came back out with a frown. I know, she said. All we have left is some bread, four licorice sticks, a coconut, and the spices that make you... Gemma stopped. Milo, I think I have an idea. Tomorrow, when they come back, 
you and I are going to be ready. He said with a grin. Milo grinned too. Not because he knew the plan, but because he liked when Gemma grinned. Under the moonlight on the third night, Gemma and Milo lay down to sleep. We'll need to rest up if my plan is going to work, he said, fixing her pillow of onion grass. Milo snuggled up to a soft bush and got cosy. So, one last try. What do you think the greatest treasure in the world is? Milo hopped up even more excited than before. He swung his tail around like a lasso, hopped on both feet, pointed to the sky, then back at his tail. Wrapped it around his leg, then danced a jig. Milo! That's... actually... okay, that would be pretty amazing. Milo lay down and fell asleep with a smile on his face. When midday came, Gemma and Milo had packed their bag, drank lots of water and were waiting in the centre of the oasis. Bits and chunks of bread were spread out on the ground in front of them. The cottontail rabbits came over the horizon and headed right for their camp. Here we go, Milo. I hope this works. The rabbits ran over their camp, just as they had each day before, and they ate all the food. Just as they had each day before, when they headed up the dune, with Gemma and Milo chasing them, there was not a speck of bread left. At the top of the dune, Gemma looked around and once again saw only sand. Milo looked at her, but she held up her hand. They stood waiting. Nothing happened. Come on, come on, she whispered, and that's when a puff of sand shot up on the other side of a dune to their left, and then another. There, she said, pointing. They ran off in the direction of the sand paths. As they came to the top of the next dune, they looked around again. Another puff from a different dune. It's working, yelled Gemma. The spices on that bread are making them sneeze, just like you, Milo. Gemma and Milo ran up and down dunes all afternoon, never losing track of the rabbits and their sandy sneezes. Then, to their surprise, the puffs of sand stopped moving. They all came from the same place, on the other side of a tall dune. When Gemma and Milo reached the top, they looked down over a group of sleeping, sneezing cottontail rabbits, curled up together. They were lying at the foot of a dirt path that stretched through a few trees, then on into a deep, dark forest. Sorry, but this story is to be continued. Make sure you check out all the other parts in case you haven't already. For more videos like this, make sure to like, share and subscribe. If there is anything particularly you want to see, make sure you comment down below. Also, what do you think will happen next? What will Milo and Gemma do? Thank you and goodbye.